everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited because tonight I'm here with Angie Whitaker from Angie Whitaker Photography and she is amazing and I'm gonna be doing her makeup tonight and talking all about how to be photo ready and we're both gonna be answering your questions about how to look good in photos tonight so make sure you guys leave us comments. So we're gonna get started on her makeup and let us know if there's anything you guys want to know. So I'm gonna start by priming her eyes. Angie and I were actually talking about this when we were prepping. So the, my favorite reason to prime the eyes is because I really like the shadows to pop, and especially if you're getting your photos taken. So I'm priming her lids just to prepare them for the shadows so that they're more vibrant and that they last a long time. So I'm just using Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm mixing light, medium, and sand. Go ahead and close, and I'm just putting it all over her eyelids. So one of the things that Angie and I both agree on is that when you're getting your photos taken, you definitely want to wear a little more makeup than you usually do, especially if your look is very natural, because photographs always really wash people out, and everything appears lighter usually. And I feel like there's certain features you always want to play up. You always want to make sure your brows are nice and defined. You definitely want to make sure your eyes are standing out and you want to make sure your lips don't disappear. What have you noticed, Angie? Like when you're editing photos, like what are the certain makeup things yeah. that you're definitely, definitely lips disappear a lot. And I've noticed that in my own photos <laughs> of myself. <laughs> and lashes actually disappear quite easily. Yes, so. oh my gosh. Um, I had a client once who came with makeup that looked horrible. She had like lines where she tried to do her eyeshadow and oh no. um, her mascara was really sparse and it just did not flatter her. She might as well have just worn no makeup and bad makeup. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally does. Because if it's not blended, it totally looks like stripey. Like I've seen yeah. your photos like a stripe of contour or like, like you're saying, like a stripe of eyeshadow and you definitely want things to be blended. Yeah, so a lot of times I'll recommend, I especially recommend to my um, brides for engagement shoots and obviously wedding days, but um, engagement shoots, it's good to um, do kind of like a practice run. So I encourage my brides to try and do their makeup professionally for their engagements and their wedding, of course. And the brides that do are always so much happier <laughs> with their makeup. It's so. so true. I 100% agree. Like, I usually have my brides, I'll have them do their trial on the day of their engagement, or I do it as, like, yeah. part of a package, like, engagement makeup is included. Yeah. Makeup is so important for photos. I, what, but, Julie, what do you say to those who don't wear makeup, like, at all? That's my question. There are women who don't wear makeup. So, those are the ones I definitely think should book a professional, because they'll know how to do it for the lighting and stuff and then you're not overwhelmed like how much should I wear and yeah. I just ex I talk people through it mm -hmm. I tell them how the camera is going to photograph and that you're going to feel like you're wearing a lot more in person but it's going to look natural yeah because even if you want to look like yourself in photos you can just enhance that a little bit with makeup like you said lashes are so huge like mm -hmm. I put lashes on everybody because they put a really dark line by your lash lines to make your yeah. eyes pop you don't have to go crazy. You don't even have to contour a ton or do things like that. You just want to do little things to make all your features stand out yeah. so that they don't all, like, fade away. Yeah, and I think for those who don't wear makeup, like, you don't have to have a look that looks like I'm wearing makeup. You can do a, a totally natural look that still looks like, to you, you're not wearing, well, you may feel like you're not wearing makeup, but to the camera, it's still going to not look like you're wearing makeup to yourself. Like, yeah. Once you get your picture yeah. taken, does that make sense? Exactly. I know exactly what you mean. I usually stick to neutrals. Like, especially if people don't wear a ton of makeup, they hire me to do their makeup for their photos. I really like warm undertone neutrals. I feel like they're flattering on everybody. Like, the shades I'm doing on Angie are definitely, like, the go-to photo shades. Like, they look so pretty on everybody. And then you still feel like yourself. Like essentially, you're just playing with light and shadow. Like pictures are 2D, so you're just kind of 
defining the features, making them stand out, and you still will look like yourself. Go ahead and close. So I'm just defining her crease with matte cork. And then I went in and I darkened it up a little bit just right by the lash line. And then I'm going over her lid with um, Soft Brown by MAC. And this one has a little bit of a sheen. For photos, I want to be really careful where I'm putting my shimmer because the shimmer will reflect light. And sometimes that can look really weird <laughs> depending on. Yes. Have you noticed that? Like if someone wears a done crazy that. highlight or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Or like I've had people wear like glitter eyeliner before or whatever. And there will be like specks of glitter. And it doesn't look like glitter in a picture. It looks yeah. like because it doesn't like glimmer. <laughs> so it looks like just specks of like. Yeah, I don't know. I like, know exactly specs. what you're talking about. It's horrible, so don't wear glittery. <laughs> These, yeah, don't no glitter. Matte. Matte. Matte all the way. You can do 100% matte. I am going to do glitter, or not glitter, I'm sorry, like a shimmery. This is like a satin mm. right on her lid just to show you guys how you can use shimmer just so you can see the difference between matte and stuff, but absolutely be careful. Like, when in doubt, use all mattes for sure because they do, like, what makes makeup glitter is like little tiny light reflecting particles and sometimes you can see them like the cameras will pick up more than our eyes do mm -hmm. like this front facing camera can see better than my own eyes and sometimes you can see the little dots like what you're talking about like in yeah. real life you can't see it but you can see the little reflective pigments yeah and cameras pick up everything on your skin too if you have a zit the camera's gonna pick it up if you have if you have large pores like I do the I camera's gonna don't. pick it up. So um, that's why I think, personally, why I think foundation or powder to fill in, that in is really important because the camera will pick it up. Yes. <gasps> Luckily, they photographers agree. do have some skin smoothing programs, and I do use one myself. But um, I think it's really helpful to get some kind of foundation for pictures that's gonna help your skin smooth your skin out because. You're gonna love your photos if you look good, <laughs> so and if you don't look, if you if mom, this is for moms, women <laughs> especially. If if the mom doesn't look good in the photos, you're not gonna love them. Your kids can all look good, your husband can look good, but if you don't look good, you're gonna hate your pictures. So that is so focus true. Focus on yourself. Hundred <laughs> percent. And I think another thing is like people think photographers can fix everything in Photoshop and like. You can fix a yeah. lot, but you still need to be careful. Like, you need to come yeah. in expecting them not to have to right. fix too much. We can't fix everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, texture, how you were talking about, is huge. Like, I know a lot of photographers mm -hmm. can smooth the skin, but, like, I had a photographer that I work with a lot tell me that the under eye area is really oh, hard to smooth. It is so like, it's hard. so hard to work with. Yes. So that's kind of another reason why if you can get it done professionally, if not, I'll give you some good tips today, but you definitely like want to look out for texture. Like a zit, if someone has a zit, that's an easy yeah, fix, right? Easy like fix. it's a click, yeah. but like dealing with texture and stuff is really tricky. Yeah. Or like if you have a really dark circle that fades lighter mm -hmm. from here to there, that's really hard to fix in Photoshop as well. Yeah, that would be hard. So use a good concealer. That's when you get into kind of color correcting. You don't really have that, but I'll talk about that when I do under your eyes so people know. They're a little bit more just me perfect. So what I'm going to do on Angie today for her eyes is a super, super diffused smoky V shape. So basically what I'm doing is bringing some drama to her eyes so that they pop and I'm lifting them a little bit with that V shape because you always want to look very lifted and awake in photos. And then I am doing a little bit of like a three tiered eye shape, like we'll have the darker V and the lighter color on the lid. But the colors I'm using are very much in the same color palette and they're within like six shades of each other. So there's not going to be any harsh lines like how you were saying with that one client that kind of had this stripe, mm -hmm. everything's going to be very diffuse. So no matter what angle she's photographed in or how close the camera is or how far away, it's going to look good because you want you to be noticed. You don't want like the makeup to be like, oh my yeah. gosh, look at her yeah. eyeshadow. I mean, maybe depending on the shoot, but yeah. <laughs> Go 
a lot of things times what I like to do like when I'm doing an engagement shoot or something like that or a wedding I'll have the client tell me the photographer and I'll look up their work and sometimes I'll alter the makeup like if they shoot really light and airy I'll do a little more drama on the eyes a little more something like that a little more contour but if they're really dark and really moody like sometimes the makeup looks more enhanced like the cheek yeah, will look really stripey true. and stuff so sometimes that's something I'll do so the photo trend right now is the light and airy. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you see more light and airy than moody? Yeah, yeah. Usually, especially for weddings. And I really yeah. like that. I feel like yeah. it's flattering. Like everybody's skin looks good that way, but you yeah. definitely need more blush and like a darker lip, like you were saying. Yeah. Like, even if you want a nude, you don't want to go like actually nude yeah. or they will have no lips. I know. There the was picture. one photo shoot where I was getting my family pictures and I thought I had a pretty good light pink color. Like I totally could notice uh -huh. one in my mirror, but once... I got my pictures back. I'm like, it doesn't even look like I put anything on my it's lips. It's crazy. <laughs> Go ahead and close. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel like photos are like the best way to learn to do makeup too. Like if you're a makeup artist, start taking pictures of your work because the camera picks up what you don't see and you'll notice stuff more like that than in person, like how mm -hmm. your lips disappear or how the blush disappears or how mm -hmm. the blush looks like too much. Like you don't want yeah. some blush either. How do you feel about contouring? I absolutely love contouring. Do you? But I had been looking for a couple years for like contouring makeup and uh -huh. I, could, I didn't know how to find it. I would like, I found like a cheap brand of uh, e.l.f. that looked like a, what's the, the one you put on your cheekbones? The highlighter? Uh, the highlighter. Yeah. So I bought this powder highlighter and it didn't work because Elf oh. is so cheap and it <laughs> uh -huh. didn't like show up and I was like, I have got to figure this out. But I found a brand Which that for the like? average girl. It works amazing. I really like um, mascara. Oh, I've heard such. Have you heard of mascara? mascara? Yeah, it's her oh. highlight. Is it a powder? No. Or a, a liquid? It's, no, it's a cream. It's a cream. Yeah. And she has a... Ooh. I can't think of all the words right yeah. now. The what, a, a what contour, you, a color, contour color here. Uh huh. And then she has like the not highlight the the concealer or the. Uh, it's a lighter color, a tiny bit lighter than your skin. You put here. I mean, there's she show she gives she you a picture does, and everything. Like, all the and shape. then I do like anyway. There's three for contouring, and then there's a blush, and they're all cream to pow cream to whatever. Yeah, cream to I powder. love them, and I I've been using that. them for probably six to eight months I think That's I love awesome. it yeah I so if you ever want to try it I'm sure there's mascara what do they call them artists uh-huh local to you That's so, so awesome I love I cream products you. I ex do you yeah I do I really love cream blushes too like her blush yeah. is cream I yeah, love it. it is it looks so much more natural like it's you so, notice yeah that? it's beautiful and she says you can even like dab your finger in it and use it for your for lips, lips. Yeah, That's I so have awesome. dry lips though, so it doesn't really work for me on the lips unless I'm doing something wrong, Julie. Do you know? Usually I'll like hydrate the lips before I go in with a lip product. Oh, okay. Like a lip balm. There is one, I think it's Dr. Lip brand. Mm -hmm. And it's like called a nipple cream, probably because you can use it for that, but it's made for the <laughs> lips and it literally works better than anything I've ever really? tried. Really? My husband will even steal it. I had it, <laughs> <laughs> it works so good. It's pure lanolin, so it's like really oh, hydrating. Okay. But I'll usually put, like, when I wash my face in the morning, I'll put that on right away, and then oh. it will kind of sink in so that by the time I get to my lips, they're fine. Because I really like the um, the liquid lips. Like, I wear those a lot. Have you used those before? They're in a tube, and they're wet, and you put it on, and it dries completely matte. Have liquid what? Liquid lipstick. No, I've never you. heard of it. Show you, and I'll show you the camera. So this is Too Faced. I'm going to show oh, the okay. camera, too. Mm -hmm. So it's like a liquid lipstick. So when it dries, it goes on with the lip gloss. But then when it dries, it's completely matte. So oh. matte products are pretty drying. Yeah. So you don't put like a balm on first. Does it stay on with the balm? Yeah. It does? Yeah, as long as it sinks in. If it's too shiny, it'll slide off. But like, oh, I so usually the balm dab. needs to sink in? Mm-hmm. How so long let do you it have sit to on? Wait? Like 10 minutes or okay. something. Or you can dab it off. I'll put some eyeliner on you. 
But those stay all day. I'll use so those So you're on choosing brown sometimes. eyeliner for me? I'm choosing brown okay. eyeliner Okay, I for used you. to always wear brown, and then I noticed that all my friends wore black, and I was like, uh-huh. well, maybe I should wear black. I'm going to try so brown why, on you today. why brown over black? I like brown because it's a little bit softer. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it just kind of blends into your shadows, and you don't have that harsh black line. Okay, yeah. You're tan right now, so you can wear, you can wear black. But if someone's really fair, I like to do brown. Go ahead and close. I really like the brown on me because I do like it, I don't know, like talking about the line. I don't like the look of the line Mm -hmm. per se. I mean, I definitely like eyeliner for sure. I love makeup, but sorry. No, you're good. No, you're totally good. You can talk while you do this. (laughs) Sometimes like I'll put on the brown liner and then I'll do a skinny black line like right by the lashes oh, okay but your eyes are so light and so blue that I feel like with the black there's like a really stark contrast which I like like sometimes I love that but I'm gonna try brown on sometimes it's too much like it looks kind of freaky <laughs> it never <laughs> looks like though. ghostly <laughs> you know what I mean yeah <laughs> actually before we went live when you were telling me like sometimes you go really dramatic on your eyes and you feel like you can't go as dramatic on your lips mm-hmm. maybe if you did the brown liner you would feel like you could like it'd be more like softer yeah go ahead and open and look at the brush and hold look your at eyes the brush? yeah what brush oh. right there yeah perfect I'm just gonna put liner on your inner corner Good job. Okay, you can close. I'm going to turn you and do a side the job. You put eyeliner on my husband for Halloween once. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he was crying. He was. His eyes were like. That's so funny. It'd be pretty fun to do a man makeover. <laughs> I know. See how much they cry. Just oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, because girls are used to your eyes being yeah. pumped and prodded. It's like definitely invasive. What was he? What was the costume? <laughs> Well, he was a, one year he was a rocker. So oh, he's, awesome. you know, Brett Michaels. He kind of yeah. dressed like Brett Michaels. Yeah. And he wears the guy liner. So, yeah, so <laughs> I had to put lots of thick eyeliner. <laughs> and then one year he called himself a classy businesswoman. <laughs> oh, that's so, so awesome. Anyway, you'd have to see it to think it was funny. I am so excited. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look at photos. <laughs> So we're getting some questions in the chat. I'm going to check those out in a second. We'll start answering them for you guys. Okay. So keep them coming. Go ahead and open and then look down in that corner. Perfect. Oh, Just with your eyes. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does that. Funny is when I tell someone to like look up and they like tilt their whole head back. <laughs> Sorry. It's always my fault. No, it wasn't we descriptive just, enough. We just can't follow directions. <laughs> People will probably do that to you when we you have, take their picture. Yeah. They like turn this way and they like turn around. <laughs> the funniest one was my <laughs> sister in law was facing her husband, uh-huh. and I like to have the girls like look down toward their shoulders. Uh-huh. And I'm like, look towards your shoulder. So there's the camera. Look uh-huh. towards your shoulder. And she's like, okay. And she like turned and looked that way. <laughs> we laughed pretty hard for a long time. Sorry. <laughs> that was so awesome. Well, people don't know. Sometimes it's nervy, nervous to like be yeah. in front of the camera. Totally. Like, how are your clients usually? Like, are they nervous? Are they good? Some of them are super nervous at first, but it's most of them. Like, once we get in the groove, then mm-hmm. they're they're awesome. Yeah. And then I'm like, you're natural. You can do this on your own. Yes. So. We're good. I'll see the sure. color. Okay. So I'm doing, for your darkest, I'm going to kind of smoke Ooh. everything else. So I'm mixing this, like a warmer chocolate brown, and this is more of like an oak. That's pretty. Brown. Pretty, pretty. It's going to be pretty. And I'm just going to smoke out down by this lash line. Let's take a question while I do that. Okay, we have one that says, Danielle asked, What is your best tip for making narrow eyes appear more full and open in photos? I have squinty eyes and my eyes tend to appear closed in photos, especially in group photos. Okay, that's a really good question actually. So I'll show you a trick with that. So I always like to smoke out the top lid like I was saying, but the trick with having your eyes look really open and big in photos is what you do with the underneath. So go ahead and open. So a lot of times I'll put like a white eyeliner on the bottom waterline or like a flesh toned. And then when I smoke out underneath the eye, I don't usually do a really dark color. Like sometimes I'll do like a light reflecting like what I did on her lid. 
and that just creates the illusion of a bigger eye because you're putting more light under the eye. If you were to take an eyeliner, like a black eyeliner, and rim all the way around your eye, it would look really close. Oh, yeah. Like, have you noticed yeah. that when people wear a lot of eyeliner, their eyes actually yeah, look that's true. smaller? So that's kind of so why. where do you find a white eyeliner? Um, I have one by NYX, so I'll show you. Because I actually looked at just Target the other, well, not the other day, probably months ago, and uh -huh. I couldn't find one. This one is by NYX. This one I really like oh, because that's like flesh it's, color. It's like a flesh tone. So sometimes I'll use the stark so white, but this one's better. I'll show the camera. I have makeup all over my hands. But I have an actual white one, and then this one's like a flesh tone. So I'll do this on Angie so you can see, but um, you just put it right oh, on no, this waterline. I know. I'm not going to finish. <laughs> when I get to that part, I'm going to do it, but it makes your eyes look so much bigger. It's really pretty. So I've heard never put, if you want your eyes to look bigger, never put dark liner on your waterline, uh -huh. right? Yeah, exactly, because the dark will kind of close things up. Go ahead and close. But it depends on your eye shape too. Like if somebody has like really protruding eyes where they're very big, they're very prominent, sometimes they do put a darker color there just to make their eyes look more balanced. Like kind of like, bug eyed like yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, like I do. Uh -huh. With them you would want to do a darker color. Okay. But I like to play with color. Like I don't use black too often on the waterline. Like I'll do like a dark brown for somebody like that because then it's it doesn't look harsh. I don't like anything to look harsh unless I'm going for like crazy drama. That was a good question. Keep them coming. What's the purpose for highlighting the corners of your eyes here? You know how we put like really light color in the corners? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose for that? Same thing, it just makes your eyes look really open and bright. Sometimes we do so much like shading and shadowing, it closes things up. So you wanna play with light and shadow. smoking out these corners. And yeah, she has really big, pretty eyes. She has a lot of lid space, so the space between her lashes and her brows. So I have a lot of room to play with my shadows. But also, when she opens her eyes, go ahead and open and look kind of forward. Look oh. forward? Mm -hmm. What do you mean forward? Just forward at the at camera. At the camera, oh. Yeah, perfect, <laughs> now you're good. So you can see the color right there. If I bring that up too high, it's gonna look too, too dramatic and too dark. If I put it down too low, her eyes will look small. So you kind of want it right in the middle. Okay, you can close. Thank you. We're getting more questions. We'll get to those in just a little bit. Awesome, guys. Okay, go ahead and open. Perfect. So that's about what I like to do on somebody for like a medium natural look like what I'm gonna do on Angie today is just make her look like the best version of herself in a photo so we're gonna keep things pretty natural but with enough drama so we're gonna move on to her brows yes please do your brows <laughs> who was in the era with me when we plucked the heck out of her eyebrows and lost them all oh isn't that so sad so sad I thinned them out way too much and now they won't grow back <laughs> <laughs> I know it's happened to so many people because brows are sensitive I feel like the ones you want to grow back will like yeah they won't they won't but like in the middle or something like that it's like they'll never die why can't that happen like <laughs> under there or... the places we shave yeah yeah <laughs> I've heard from a lot of clients that have used like the lash growth stuff. If they put it on their brows, sometimes the hairs will grow back. Yeah, have you tried that? actually I did, and it has helped a little. Has to it? To tell you the truth, yeah. Like my brows out here, I had done so far in that they weren't growing out very far. Good deal, yeah. And so I've been working on those lately, and it's helped a little. I'm hoping oh, it helps good. more. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. 
So usually before I do the brows, I just do like a tiny bit of foundation around them just so it has something to stick to. And that way when I do her foundation after, it doesn't rub off the brows. And with her, since we are gonna do her brows more full, I'm gonna start with a pencil. If you're replacing hairs that aren't there, it's good to use a brow pomade or a pencil because the cream products tend to stick to the skin a little bit better. If I use a pencil, a lot of times I'll go over it again with powder just to soften it up. But if I do a pomade, I usually do that because I'm going for a bolder look or a more long lasting look, so I don't usually go over it with powder. Like what kind of powder would you put over your eyebrows? Like at the same color as your like face powder? I use like a brow powder or you can use an eyeshadow that's the color of the brow. So if you're using like a taupe mm. pencil, you can go over it with a taupe powder. Okay. Or sometimes I'll color correct. Like with you, for your hairs, I would do like a taupe pencil. And then because you have like blonder highlights, sometimes I'll go over it with like a, a blonde color shadow just to look mimic the natural hairs. Let's see what questions we have. That's a lot of questions. Yeah, we're getting some good questions. questions. Okay, there's a question for Angie. This <gasps> oh, is no, from I'm Megan. <laughs> she Megan wants to know, what kind of clothes should I wear in photos to make me look thinner? Oh, boy. That's a good question. Okay. So if you're already thin and you have no, like, stomach issues, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I, I would suggest, like, more form-fitting if you're wearing a dress, like, something that will accentuate your waist. And also when you're... When your photographer is posing you, she should always try and get a gap you probably can't see mm -hmm. between your you elbow. Can face this camera and they might. Okay. <laughs> be able to Maybe. See. <laughs> okay. You should always try and get a small gap between your elbow and your waist, and Great that hair. will like thin you out in the midsection. That's a good tip. If you are a little larger like me, you're gonna want looser fitting tops, and layering is so awesome. Layering, no matter what, is gonna be fabulous for photos so does that kind of answer the question yeah. if you have bigger arms I think the three the three quarters length works Sweet. really well or all the way bit. yeah but if you're already thin I think if you accentuate your thinness it's going to make you look thinner too yeah. <laughs> does that make sense <laughs> yeah those are good tips so, so is that why celebrities always like put yes, their hand on their hips totally the is it? so we yeah. should all study their posing <laughs> yeah if you study celebrity posing <laughs> like you will know how to work camera yeah. if you have a good photographer then your <laughs> photographer will tell you exactly how to pose to make you look your best too so that's true too I'm gonna start working on your brows okay that is so true I feel like photographers that like walk you through the pose and cut yeah coach you mm -hmm. then you know you're gonna look good and I feel like the weirdest poses are gonna make you look the best like yeah. the more you're contorted like, yeah the better it's you look. very true <laughs> I'll sometimes be coaching a client and they'll be like, that feels really weird. And I'll be like, I promise it looks good. You're going to love it. <laughs> so that happens. Sec. Danielle wants to add to that question. She says she has a friend that always looks at least 10 pounds thinner in her photos. Do you have any suggestions about what to look thinner? You kind of answered that. Just she always looks 10 pounds thinner. Maybe also, she heavier. your photographer, if you're, should never be shooting like below you. Oh, that's a good one. So if they're like <laughs> below you, you're gonna see your double chin. You're gonna see just you're just gonna look bigger. If they're shooting straight on or slightly above you, that's gonna be a lot more flattering too. And also, if you just turn to the side a tad, lean forward just a tad. I always tell my clients to kind of stick out their chin. That helps this area. It's a lot of yeah, tips. That's that so photographers good, will though. help you with. Good questions, guys. I'm gonna talk towards me. That's why when people take selfies, they hold it up. Yes. So you look skinnier. Yes. All oh, the tricks. <laughs> this is good. I thought about doing like a selfie post. Like. Oh, I love it. <laughs> then I was like trying all the selfies on myself. I'm like, if I do a selfie post, I have to like take selfies of myself. Uh -huh. 
and then post it with my tips, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. You're so cute in your selfies, though. <laughs> you totally But can. you know it takes like a hundred times to try and make yourself look good in selfies, right? <laughs> I love watching people take selfies in public. Because it does. Mm-hmm. You take a bunch. You have to so find maybe. the good light and find the good pose. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> my base with the um, pencil now I'm going to go in with powder so this is like that golden powder I was telling you about oh. that matches your hair so but what I'm, is this this is a brow palette so oh. this is Anastasia okay. Beverly Hills that's cool it's her brow palette so this one I use because it has all the colors so on Angie she's blonde but then she has the darker brown undertone so I'm probably going to mix these golden colors with the more like taupey brown So, you're, did you just say this is the powder over the pomade? Yeah, so just over the pencil. So, I did oh, a pencil, over the pencil on you, and now I'm doing a okay. powder. And usually, most people like don't have as many hairs like at the tail where you were talking about where you mm-hmm. said you lost some. So, I always do like a little bit darker there, and then I go lighter as I go over okay. the middle. Is there a, a way that you know of, like, let's say someone had, like, uneven eyes or something. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to, like, help that with makeup or not? Like, uneven eyes, like, the Like, one will be higher eyes. than the other. Or, yeah, even, like, <laughs> for example, my brows. Uh-huh. Is there a way to help that yeah. with the makeup? Yeah, definitely. With brows, it's probably the easiest because you can kind of lift one with makeup. You can draw on where there's hairs. With eyes, you can definitely correct things a little bit and honestly like no one's symmetrical like I took a a photography class in high school and he made us like take a photo of ourselves and like double expose like do you know what I'm talking (laughs) about like half the face and you look so different so like it's okay if features aren't exactly the same but for eyes like I'll do the makeup and then I'll have them open their eyes and like if one eye is a little bit higher I'll probably just either do like a darker shadow underneath that eye or a lighter one. Like mm-hmm. I keep it the same, but sometimes I'll bring one shade a little bit lower mm-hmm. or like maybe on this eye, if it's lower, I'll bring up the darker shadow a little bit higher than the other eye, but you never want it to be noticeable, but you can do yeah. little tiny things too. Yeah. Make it different. So they say Halle Berry has the perfectly symmetrical face. Oh, Have you heard that? Yeah. Her and Denzel Washington. Oh. I've heard him too. Yeah. <laughs> they both are. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they use them as an example. She totally does. And that is where the rest of us are not symmetrical. <laughs> I think that's why like people are always like, oh, this is my good side. It's yeah. you know, actually like not the same. Oh, that's another good photo side. tip. That's another good photo tip. I'm glad you brought that up. What? Good side. So if you know you have a good side and you know you're going to like that, Side about you better you tell your photographer sorry yeah you tell your photographer like this is my good side or whatever this uh-huh. is my good side can you remember to pose me on that side or if she forgets because I'm forgetful just be like oh <laughs> I want to switch sides yeah it's my good side oh yes go to your good side that's so good. that's actually yeah. a really good tip because people are probably scared to speak up yeah people are but you don't know you can't read my yep. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my husband has learned my good side because when we take a picture together, he like knows which side I want to stand. <laughs> like no wrong one, no <laughs> other one. It's funny. Okay, turn towards me. So brows or something like remember how we were saying like people that don't usually wear a lot of makeup like I always define their brows. And I talk them through it. I'm like, your brows are kind of going to disappear in the photo, so we're going to do them a little bit darker than we would in real life, but I don't want to do crazy. And I think it depends on how far away the photos are, too. If they're a bunch of close-ups, like, you'll obviously see the brows a little bit more. But if it's, like, family photos where everyone's, like, far away, like, you want them to be defined. Like, what have you noticed with brows for people? Do you like them when they fill them in and stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um... Kind of need to be careful with your brows too, though. Um, this person I was talking about before did a really horrible job on her brows. <laughs> so I don't know. You need to get help. Can you tell us? I've heard that there's a, like 
your brows need to start here and end here. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. yeah I can totally can you tell, tell you. Okay. I can. So you take your pencil or whatever, and it's the side of the nose, straight up, and this is where it should start. It's usually about the tear duct. And then you use the side of the nose for everything. Side of the nose, hmm. side of the eye, and a little V, and that's where your brow should end. And then the oh. arch is side of the nose with your eyes facing straight forward. You go right across the pupil, and that's where it should be lifted. And then one Wait, more point. Wait, say that one again? How do you so do that one? Side of the nose, and uh -huh. then right over it. Like, if you're looking forward, your pupil, so side of the nose people. Uh -huh. If you're holding a straight stick, it'll make an angle. Mm -hmm. And then where the stick lands, this little mark right here is where the arch should be, like the oh. highest point. Okay. And then one more tip that people don't know is to take the stick and do the front of the brow and the tail, and that should be straight across. Oh. Like, have you noticed, like, if this goes down further than that, she's going to look mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or if it goes up higher, you're going to look surprised. Okay. So you usually want it straight across, yeah. unless you're correcting um, something, like unless somebody does look like really mad. Too happy? And you want it, yeah, <laughs> you want to hire someone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you're not correcting, then you want it to be the same. Okay. I didn't know those. I thought the inside of the brow was supposed to be in line with your corner of your eye. The Do you know what I'm saying? Brow. I thought this was supposed to be oh, in line yeah. with the corner of your eye, but it's actually the corner of your it's nose. It's actually the corner of the nose, but they end up being about the same. Usually, okay. Yeah. And then I thought this was like the end of, just extended out past the end of the eye, but how did you do that one again? So edge of the nose again, and then edge of the eye, and then wherever it lands. Okay. Like right there. Like usually what I'll do is take an angled brush and put powder on it, and I'll have the powder side up. And I'll do my, my oh. edge, and then I'll draw like a line, and then the line's there, and I know like where my marks are gonna That's be. Smart. That's what I used to do when I was like, because I just tweeze my eyebrows, I don't wax them, I'd make my little marks, mm. and then I would just draw in the brow, and I would tweeze all the way around it. Oh, that's that way you so get like a perfect Did you go brow. to beauty school or something? Like, <laughs> it's like I went to beauty school. <laughs> we probably had a chapter on brows <laughs> in the lady standard cosmetology book. <laughs> <laughs> Brows are fun. I love brows. I actually took like an advanced brow class like a couple years after I had my license and stuff. Just because it's so like, they make such a huge difference. Like they can totally change the shape of your face and there's a lot of correcting and stuff you can do with them. My microblading I think is really cool because I think brows make such a big difference. I want to do that so bad. But they're, it's like a little bit time consuming to do them. So if you can yeah. just wake up all browed. Right? You'd be perfect. All browed and lashed. Then all you... browed and lashed. Mm -hmm. Then you're good for the day. I love brows and lashes. Brows, lashes, good skin. Mm -hmm. You're just set. I'm going to move on to foundation and then we'll answer another question. So, can we talk about foundation real quick? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Best I have talk. a lot of questions. No, you're good. I'm going to apply So, I else. have always just been like, foundation first before yes. everything else. Why don't you do it that way? Because I can't imagine doing my foundation like later. Like last? Yeah. So, usually when I do it, it's because... Um, I don't want to have to be careful if I get like shadow falling out under there mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then I can make sure it's really clean before mm -hmm. I put on foundation but when I do my own I do foundation first okay usually it depends sometimes I like foundation first on clients because then they're like a perfect blank canvas like I can see exactly how the eyes are going to look but I've been doing it long enough now that I can do eyes first Plus, like, for a bright or something like that where you really want the foundation to be so long-lasting, like, yeah. the longer you wait to put it on, the better. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's another reason. So if someone were to come to you, just an average mom, mm -hmm. like me, be like, hey, I want my makeup done for my family photos, how much time would you need for that? Usually, like, 45 minutes okay. or so to do it. 
half hour to, I usually book an hour, but it takes mm -hmm. like half hour to 45 minutes. I usually do like a makeup hair combo, so that's usually like about an hour and 15, mm. depending. So what I'm doing now, I put a little bit of makeup remover on a cotton pad and I'm just lifting the eyeshadow up almost to meet that tail of her brow so that it's in a nice V. This is another reason I like to do the eyes first because I can do this. Wait, what's on this? A makeup remover. Oh, makeup remover. So I'm just taking off all the excess shadow below this V so that the shadows create a nice V and then I'm gonna put concealer down underneath. And this is what really lifts the eye, that V shape. If you blend shadows down too far down, you're gonna look tired or sad. Mm. Like if you have like a heavy shadow down. Mm. Look up for me. Good, my open. eyes. Yeah, good job. What kind of makeup remover do you use? So this one is, this one's actually Micellar Water. It's Bioderma, so it's just like a water that removes yeah, I like makeup that. and stuff. It's actually it's not awesome. not oily at all. Mm, it doesn't nice. leave an oil residue and it's super gentle. You can get really that. I like it. So when I do foundation for photos, and you can tell me what you've noticed with this, I almost always like, especially for brides, I probably always, I go down the neck and the chest a little bit just because people's necks are always lighter. And then I feel like the foundation and powders reflect light different, so they photograph different. So if I just do people's face, I don't want that to appear different in a photo yeah. than everything else. Yeah, that's such a good idea. My, my neck is so much whiter than my face and my chest, and I've got like old lady chest going on now that I'm getting older. <laughs> so I think it's a great idea <laughs> to go all over. Yeah, most people like a little bit of coverage there. I can totally match people like their face to their neck, but most people like a little bit of coverage. And depending on the lighting the photographers use, like do you feel like flash reflects a little bit different off their makeup than natural light? Have you noticed? Yeah, it definitely does. Um, I, I, you gotta have the, yeah, the off-camera flash that's, uh, what's the word I'm looking up for? Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> da, da. I keep thinking diluted, but that's water. Diffused. Oh, there we yes. go. Yeah. A good diffused flash. Good job. So much better. Yeah. So, so have you better. found with women that, I mean, you've, t you've probably done a ton of makeup, so are there more women who like foundation or hate foundation and would never wear it? I would say like... Oh. I feel like I've only done like one person who was like, I don't want foundation, please. And you can just use powders or a bit of concealer. Or honestly, usually people never wear foundation. Their skin's a lot better, so mm -hmm. you don't need it so much. Have you found people that don't like wearing it? Yeah. Really? I have a lot of friends who hate foundation. I'm always like, why? <laughs> like, it makes best. your skin look <laughs> so much better. <laughs> so that one always makes me like... Maybe I shouldn't wear foundation, but then when I don't, I'm like, oh gosh, my <laughs> poor skin. Turn your head towards me a little. I have to. That's so funny. No, I seriously have hardly met anyone that said that, but maybe they don't come to me if they don't want to. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably don't true, really right? You don't want a makeup artist if you don't like makeup. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that. <laughs> But some of it, I mean, and you have to know the reason. Be, like, if someone came to me and didn't like makeup, I would probably just ask more questions. Like, well, are you sensitive? Do you break out? Do you get, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or do they hate the feeling? Because there's different things you can use. You can use yeah. powders instead. Or sometimes if people have a really even skin or they want, like, a super sheer coverage, I'll just mm -hmm. mix a moisturizer in with the foundation mm -hmm. so it's not as full coverage. Okay. So there's different things Yeah, the friend. Do. She hated foundation. I'm like, but you'll love mine. Come to my house. <laughs> so I made her like come over and put it on, and she's like, oh, I can't handle it. It feels so <laughs> awful. But I'm like, oh, but you, you get used to it. It's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Sometimes I've found people with drier skin like don't like it as much because they don't get the right one. Like if you get something really matte and really full coverage and you have dry skin, it will like crack mm. on certain people. Kind of, or like it just feels heavier, I feel mm. like. Another question, Lynn. Blending you in. 
Okay, this one says, whenever I use anything but liquid eyeliner, it gets all over my eyeshadow when I open my eyes. Um, you want to make sure it's dry. You probably have hooded eyes. I've noticed hooded eyes will do that. Like, when you close your eyes, they're fine, and you put on your layer, but when you open them, you get, like, that line across your lid. I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, you probably just want a shadow, like a fast drying gel shadow, or one that dries really matte. There's a brand called Inglot, and their liner dries super matte, and it doesn't budge. Like some of the gel liners are very, very creamy, and they stay very creamy, so they'll transfer all around your eyes. So I really like the ones that dry. So you probably just have to put on your liner and keep looking down or keep your eye closed for like a minute until it sets and then you can open your eye and shouldn't get everywhere. You can also put powder over it and that will help too. It will help set it. Okay, I'm gonna take some concealer. So, about back to the eyeliner. Uh-huh. You usually don't want to see like a thick line, right? You kind of want a more of a blended. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. That's so. My if you preference. wear liquid, is there a way to blend the liquid eyeliner? So the liquid, go ahead and look up for me. Thank you. The liquid is gonna leave a line. So if you want like a harsh wing or something, that's what you would use a liquid for. If you want it more smudgy, I would use a gel or a pencil. I'll use the liquid on people sometimes, but I just try to keep the line really thin so it just looks like their lashes are darkened up. Um, and then I don't do, well it depends on the look, I don't do a super dramatic wing. A little. Oh, can I ask about bum chins? Uh -huh. What if we don't like our bum chin, what do you do? <laughs> That's so funny. I feel Is like those are way? like everyone wants that. What? You know, all the cute celebrities have them, no, like they Jessica don't. Simpson. She does. Yeah. Who else? I just remember being like, oh, those are so cute. I totally want. Them. <laughs> Anyone who has one does not think that about themselves. <laughs> you can I'm put sure. light. Like it's a um, it's a shadow, so it's like an indentation, so you can put a little bit of like lighter concealer in it and mm -hmm. then buff it out. Okay. I'll try it. I never even noticed you have one. Yours is not oh, super mine's dramatic. Mine's pretty prominent, I think. Really? <laughs> Go ahead and look up for me. So I did a lighter concealer under your eyes just to highlight you a little bit. You always you blend like using these egg things? Yeah, I love them. The beauty blenders. Mm -hmm. Have you used one before? Yeah, I have one now. Do you like it? And I, yeah, I don't think I totally know how to use it perfectly right, but mm -hmm. I've been trying it more lately. Yeah, so. they're good with creams and liquids. Where do you find yours? I get mine at Sephora. It's the beauty blender brand. But there's, um, there's a brand called Real Techniques. And those are pretty inexpensive, and I feel like they sell them at Target in like two packs. They're okay. orange, and they're pretty big. They fall apart easier. Like I feel like these uh, last forever, and I clean like you, you clean, clean them, them every time. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like not rough when I clean them, but like I want them to be perfectly clean. And yeah. those orange ones, the real techniques would fall apart for me, but oh. these ones won't. But for if you're using it on yourself, you still want to keep it clean, but you can do it every like couple days or something. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna set her with translucent powder. Do you always use translucent? I usually do. If they want really full coverage, uh -huh. then I'll do um, I'll do a colored powder because usually they have more they have coverage in them too, like a foundation powder. Mm -hmm. But if not, I like translucent because I don't love usually a lot of powder. I like the skin to look mm -hmm. like skin. So say I get oily throughout the day, like. 
you know, around my nose or forehead, mm-hmm. would you suggest like putting more translucent powder on or like using a beauty, what are they called, the blotters? The blotter, look up for me. What I would do is use those like oil blotter sheets. Have you ever used oh, those Oh yeah, before? that's what I was trying to say. Oh yeah, yeah. those yeah. are amazing because they absorb the excess oil and then you can put a little powder over it. But if you are the type that gets really oily and you keep putting powder over powder over powder all day, sometimes it'll look a little cakey. Mm. But if you absorb the powder first, and then put on a little bit of translucent powder, or you absorb the oil and then put mm. on powder. It lasts a little yeah. bit. Okay. Looks a little bit more natural. I give all my brides little like touch up kits for the day, little like gift bags, and uh-huh. I just put those like oil blotting sheets in them. Go ahead and look up. But they usually don't. Eat. I usually prep my brides so much. I do like so much skin prep and so many layers of good things. Oh really? There. Yeah. That's kind of what why a trial is so important for mm-hmm. brides too is really to see how their skin reacts. Oh. So what what can I ask what you mean by skin prep? Yeah, so usually I like to let my moisturizer sink in for a while so when they come to me I hydrate mm-hmm. their skin and then I address any problems they have. Like if they're oily, um, I'll put like a, a oil primer on them, like an oil free primer, oil preventing primer or something like oh. that. Or if they're extra dry, yeah, totally. Or if they're really dry and kind of congested, sometimes I will exfoliate them first and then put on my my primers. So you just put on different things that either add more moisture or prevent it or brighten them up and stuff like that. Go ahead and look down. I'm just gonna measure your lashes. Turn towards me. Oh, these almost fit you perfect. I might not have to cut them. Look at me. Good. Close. A lot of times when people think like their skin's really oily, I think I was telling you this earlier, when their skin just gets so, so oily throughout the day, Mm -hmm. it's usually actually like dehydrated. Like they're just not moisturizing enough. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll find that out and then I'll like, I'll just hydrate them a lot and then put like an oil preventing primer on them. So what is an oil preventing primer? Where do you find those? Just anywhere? Yeah, you can get it anywhere depending on the brand you want. Usually it's like a spray, like a mist, kind of like a modifying mist. Okay. Or sometimes, like if you're super oily, like so, so oily, you can um, like use those oil blotters before you put on your foundation. Mm. Like if you still want to moisturize, you can. And then right before you put on your foundation, you can blot up like the excess. I think that's what I need to do. It helps. Yeah. You can even, like if you get extra oily and you use creams, right, as your mm-hmm. foundation, the cream, you can um, put it, like the super lightest layer of powder on your skin first. Oh, and really? Do, like not too much or it will yeah. like get like cakey and stuff, but try a little bit. Like just in your T-zone where you mm-hmm. get oily. Okay. But try the blotters first because you have to be super oily for the okay. powder thing. Yeah, I don't feel like you yeah, that super super. Yeah, oily. I haven't even ever seen you like too shiny or anything. Close your eyes, we'll get stuck. Oh, sorry. No worries. So lashes, like we were talking about earlier, are like a must. Like they will make your eyes stand out. Even if people have super thick natural lashes, I still always put lashes on everybody unless they don't want them. But everyone wants them. Yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> I, in all my years of doing makeup, I literally only had one person who's like, I really don't want them. Really? Yes, I did. I'm like, that's totally fine. Oh my goodness. No one has to have them. Because even if they're, like, want something more natural, you can do, like, those little cluster lashes, too, yeah. that we were talking about earlier. So you dry it a little to make it stickier, or what? Yeah, because if it's too wet, have you ever noticed, I don't know if you've tried to put them on and you put it on when it's too wet, they just like 
pop right off. Yeah. You want it to be tacky a little bit, so it grabs onto it. Usually it's 30 seconds. brown lashes, like how we were talking about brown mm -hmm. liner. Mm -hmm. They're really pretty on people that are really fair. I feel like they photograph really well because then the lashes aren't as stark. I love them. I really do lashes on everybody. If they're like, like older women, sometimes I'll just do really, really short ones, but I still put the lashes on and they look so pretty. let those dry. Okay. I'm going to contour you while those dry and then I'm probably going to curl them a little bit and put mascara on. So I never heard of putting mascara on fake lashes until you. Yeah. So that's pretty normal for people to do. I always do. The only reason you don't want to is if they're your personal use lashes and you want to get as many wears out of them as possible, then you don't want to get mascara on them. You can put it on first. But I feel like unless you really don't have any lashes or they're really short, if you don't put mascara on, they're not like dark at the base. Okay. Like yours are a little bit lighter, so you can almost see that like lightness yeah. of the base. <laughs> and like the light. whole reason for lashes is to have like the, the depth, like the darkness. Yeah. I'm gonna contour her just lightly. I definitely love like a nice defined cheek in photos. You just don't want any stripes. Most people like their jaw contoured a little bit too. In photos, when your clients are contoured, is it usually all like what do you like? Do you like a lighter hand? Do you like a lot of contours? Like what photographs best that you've noticed? Honestly, when my I I really only see when my brides are contoured, and mm -hmm. I I think. Well, I, I don't know if it was light or dark. I feel like it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it wasn't obvious to me that, I mean, since I know about it, yeah. I noticed, I don't think anyone would just be like, oh my gosh, she was just contoured and highlighted. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. I think a good contouring is, is good. Is good. That's my opinion. What's your opinion? I think so too. I think the only time I ever haven't liked it in photos is when it's, it just has been like, almost too fat or it's like like a big stripe on the side but if it's like a nice blended contour I mm -hmm. like it. So most people want definition to their face. Yeah. Especially like we talked about if it's like the light and airy photos like it's nice to have some contrast. Yeah definitely. I'm gonna do blush on Angie last because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with her lips yet. If I do something more peachy, we'll do a peach blush. If I go more pink, we'll do pink. Pinky. Okay, curl your lashes just a little bit. Look at me. Just a teeny, teeny bit. They actually look pretty good. Is that all right? Yes. That's kind of scary, but <laughs> it's not. Does it hurt? <laughs> no, I'm super soft, but I like it's probably looks so weird to curl them on camera because <laughs> it does. It's like it looks <laughs> aggressive, but I'm very gentle. I'm not about to pinch somebody. Let's do some some mascara. <laughs> Look down, and I'm just gonna pull your lid up. So, do you have a favorite makeup product, or do you just use a plethora of? I just use a plethora. The more the merrier. I love makeup. <laughs> I love getting new makeup. Me too. What's your like desert island product? Like you're on a desert island, you get one makeup item. What do you? Oh like? my gosh. It's a tough question. Oh my gosh. I don't know. If I I don't know. I'm not answering it. I can't. Top five. I'll give you five. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then I would do 
the um, mascara. Good one. Then I would do Clinique. And I would do MAC. And I would do. Oh my gosh. Actually, Mary Kay. <laughs> Because I like some of their stuff. Remover. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I like some of their stuff. Um, that for me. And then I actually really like a Maybelline mascara. So I'd say Maybelline, I guess. Awesome. Oh, but what about our gel? Oh, yeah, your brow pomade. My brow, okay. Yeah, I really need that. She was telling me she uses Ardell brow pomade on her brows, and I did not know Ardell made that, and I'm so excited. I'm going to try it, because they're awesome. Their lashes are some of my favorite. So this, go ahead and look up. This is the shadow I was talking about. So this is like a very... Um, pearlized light reflecting gold but it's a brown gold so it's not going to look crazy and it doesn't have those glitter particles in it it's just more of like a um like a pearlized like a shine and so this is going to add a little dimension because it's darker than her skin color but it's also light enough that it's going to make her eyes look bigger and i'm doing it fairly thick just to create a nice pop of color and then if her eyes don't water I'm going to take this <laughs> nude pencil do my best. and put it in the waterline. It's okay. I actually feel like people with lighter eyes, go ahead and look up, tend to water easier and are like more sensitive to things and sensitive to light. Oh, I'm definitely super sensitive to light. Are you? I wear sunglasses like on extremely cloudy days because... I'm squinting all the time if I don't. Yeah, I am too. Do you wear sunglasses a lot? Mm-hmm. My eyes aren't as light as when they're like medium, they're green, but I notice that they're like with my lash extension clients, you turn, it's, you have a, their eyes are closed, but you have on a really bright light so you can see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And before, their eyes are closed the whole time, but at the end, obviously you open them and I had to like, I would turn off the light and I had to wait like two minutes so their eyes could like adjust before they open her they would water and it was only my blue eyes but it was oh good because I knew yeah. like she has light eyes I know yeah. what I have to do like at the end of this <laughs> I wonder what the science is behind that it's I don't really know interesting. and that's like Julie's speculation it is not like real science it's just like what I've observed yeah. <laughs> look up for me and I am going to do mascara I like a little bit of like definition under their eyes to go over that light color Is, have you ever tried the Too Faced? It's the Better Than Sex mascara. I've never used Too Faced anything. Do you like it? I do. I just got, I went to just Sephora and I got, they have like a pack of mascaras you can get and they're like all trial size. Oh, but they cool. come with like the real brush and stuff and then you try them and then you bring in a little card and they give you like one full size, like whatever you like the best. Wow, really? So I'm trying all these new mascaras and I like this one. This one's good if you want them thick, but it almost like can get clumpy if you're not careful. I like it. They have one by Tarte in there that so far is my favorite. I think they have Lancome, Marc Jacobs, Too Faced, and Tarte. I think there's one more. I'll have to go try that. Yeah, but I really like it. Want to go shopping? Mm -hmm. I know. Let's go to Sephora. I love it. I love living in California because LA has like a bunch of really big like makeup stores. Mm. The people that do movies and stuff like that shop at and they just have, they have everything there. It's so fun. In LA? Mm-hmm. Uh, like a, wait. They have one called, it's like a Sephora, but it's almost like, like the upstairs is like Sephora and the downstairs is like a warehouse. Like they oh, have these cool. shelves with like boxes of lashes, like Whoa. any style you want and you can like pull them out. Do you go there a lot? Yeah, I love it. They have just a lot of cool things. Like they have a lot of little disposable products too. Just like anything you can think of that you need. So is it in a certain district? You know, don't they have like yeah, districts there? Yeah, Which so I've it's never not done, in the so. district. Okay. I've never done those either. I'd it like to. Fun. I want to go to the fashion district. I think they have the bridal fun. district. They do? I think so. And I want to go get like fun hair accessories and oh, stuff. Oh, that would be fun. For my brides. 
guys look so pretty. Yay, thanks. Do you sell? Mm, kind of. Kind of? Like lines here and there. <laughs> so you probably like the, the fashion I district because they do fabric fun. and stuff like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Flower district. Oh, yeah, be fun. yeah, I want to go to that one too. Yeah. My husband and I were like hanging out in LA and we went down to the districts, but it was like, I think it was like 5 p.m. on a Saturday, 4 p.m. and they were like totally all shut down. And it's like, really? A, yeah, it's so weird. It's like deserted. Like, I Why? think it's just, I don't know. I think they're a morning only thing. Oh, really? So if you go, check the calendar. Make sure. We go in the morning. <laughs> Make sure. Okay, I think, no, I think I'm going to do this faux color. I kind of want to try a peachy color on you. Okay. Because you usually wear pinks, right? Mm hmm. I do. See, this is a pink. This one's faux by MAC, which is super pretty on you. Let me see though. Let's try a peach. <laughs> I actually used to wear more orangey lip. Did I just you? haven't tried it for a long time. But I think they do look pretty good. Yeah. You can pull off both. This one's velvet teddy. I think I'm gonna stick with the pink. I like the peach though. Okay. I like both. How do you recommend cleaning your brushes and how often? I, um, if it's for just for yourself, use, yeah. probably, and you wear make if you wear makeup every day, probably like once a week, okay, would be good. Um, I really like, hang on, let me play. <laughs> Sorry, I got dog and make at the same time. You really can. I really like um, brush shampoos that come in like a solid bar, it almost looks like a bar of soap. And then you get your brush wet, and then you just like gently swirl it around the soap and it lathers it, and then just oh. on your hands. Like you want to be gentle with your brush. Mm -hmm. They also have, like, have you heard of the brand Cinema Secrets? I'll have to show you after. It's like a bottle of liquid, and you just pour a little bit in a dish, and you super lightly touch your brush in, and then wipe it off on a towel, and it sucks all of the product out, oh. and it dries in like a minute. Wow. So that's a good, like, I'll use that as like a touch-up, like an in-betweener, and then I'll shampoo mine. Like on, on my personal ones, mm -hmm. I'll use that little touch-up cleaner every couple days, and then I'll shampoo them maybe like once a month or hmm. something just to condition them. Shampoo, like any kind of shampoo, like, is that what you mean by shampoo? Yeah, I like the brush shampoo that comes in the solid, like, specifically for oh, brushes, okay. but if you have, like, a sulfate-free hair shampoo or something like that, you can use that. Anything that's gentle, because they're usually made of hair, so hmm. whatever you use on nice head hair, you could use on your brushes. Yeah. So this pink is probably like four shades darker than Angie's skin tone. So in a photo, it would just look like a really pale baby pink, even though in real life it's kind of like a medium mauvey pink. So if you like a nude lip, like if you like a brown tone nude, like instead of doing something that's like actually a nude, go like three shades darker. You know what I think looks weird too? Maybe I'm wrong. What? When girls accentuate their lips too much for photos, mm -hmm. then that looks really bad. Too. It looks like you I can know. tell. Yeah, you can tell. By accentuate, I mean like go above their lip line or below too much. Like over jaw. Yeah, especially with people, like some people will do that with a darker lip line and then oh, fill it yeah, that, that lighter color and then you can for sure tell. Yeah. Yeah, if people want to do that, usually it's like less is more for sure. It's like we were saying earlier, the camera like picks everything up. So mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell more, like it may look fine in person, but I feel like in photos you can really see. Mm -hmm.
Another thing I like to do with lips is take concealer, foundation, and edge the edges when I'm done, just to create a nice, like, sharp lip line. Is that lighter than your skin? Um, sometimes I go, like, half shade lighter. I usually like to keep it about the same, but I just really like those edges to be crisp. Especially if you go with like a lighter color, then I feel like it doesn't blend into the skin. Mm. What kind of brush do you use for that? I use like a, a flat shader brush because it's really stiff, so I can like draw a line oh. and then fade it out into the skin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Are you a gloss girl or a lipstick girl? Gloss. Gloss. Mm-hmm. What are you? I used to be gloss. I'm lipstick now. Like I like, converted, huh? I converted, but like how I was telling you, like my natural lips have a lot of pigment. Mm -hmm. So if I wear a gloss, like I feel like it just looks like all the same color. <laughs> so I like the I like the lipstick. It lasts longer too. Like those lip, liquid lipsticks I was telling you about, like mm -hmm. last forever. And you don't have to touch it up. Hmm. Okay. Because we did that pinky color, I'm going to do like a nice light blush toned blush on her. What do you see with blush? Do you feel like you are more likely to get annoyed by someone wearing too much blush, or do you see people like not wearing enough I blush? don't see enough, to tell you the truth. That's what I usually see, too. I feel like, especially, you do not a lot of natural light, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's, like, just gone. Yeah, it is. Which is why natural light is so pretty, because everything else is gone, too, mm -hmm. like, imperfection. It is, <laughs> yes. The natural light is really nice on your skin. Your photos are so pretty. If you have not looked up Angie, that's your website, Angie Whitaker Photography. Yep. Dot com. Same with your yeah. Insta, right? Angie Whitaker Photo. Photo. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. We yeah. love all your stuff. But I don't do newborn. <laughs> you don't do newborn. But you do weddings. Yeah. Family do photos. Weddings, family, seniors. Newborn is its own little. It really is. It's, its own little genre. It is, and you have to be good at it, and I'm just not good at it. So. <laughs> I almost like that better. I like I like I'm more comfortable with photographers that are like, I am good at this, and I'm amazing <laughs> at it. You know, they don't do it all. You know, they're really good at what they do. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is highlight her. And like she brought up earlier, where you can see those, the glitter, this is my favorite for photography. It's Hourglass, and these are called Ambient Lighting Powders. And they're very, very so soft. Yeah, they're pressed, and there's no glitter. Like, they reflect, but there's no, no glitter. And these, if somebody really, like, has really dry skin, you could even put this all over the skin, and it would just look really glowy. I'm just going to highlight her little cheekbones. You like fantastic cheekbones. Do I? Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I did. You do. Okay, I'm going to take this makeup off my hand. Give you a mirror so you can see. Oh, take my hair down first. I'll take it down. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> So let's give you a little gloss. I want to add a little bit of gold to your lipstick. So I'm going to add Pink Carrot by MAC. It's really pretty. It's like a peachy color. What's a little that gold flex. That's it's pretty. Pink Carrot. Yeah, that's pretty. But it's so pretty. You can kind of alter the look of your lipstick with gloss. Like if you feel like it's a little too blue, you can add some gold. If you feel like it's too warm, you can add a cool tin. It's 
So what made you decide to gloss in the end? To gloss, I wanted to warm it up a little bit. I wanted a little bit of those gold flecks on your oh, lips to match okay. your eyes. Just when you take the hair down, you can see like the final, <laughs> the final look. It's a mirror. <laughs> Aww, I need you every day in my life. <laughs> You're such a babe. I, I like it. Your eyes are like, ooh. Mm. I like it. Can you come Thank over you. every morning? Yes, I'll <laughs> be there. Come here. I'm all set up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for fun. being my model. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you for all your questions. It was so much fun. I'm live Monday through Friday, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. And don't forget to check out Angie. Angie Whitaker, <laughs> Angie Whitaker Photography. Dot com and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.